Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk about testing your thyroid at home or a hypothyroidism self-test and whether or not you can do it. Um, and just the too long, didn't read version of this is, yes, you can check your thyroid at home. Um, so if you're wondering, the answer is yes. The, one of the problems with this strategy, though, is it's not quite as accurate as checking your thyroid function t lab tests or, or looking at your blood work. Um, so just I want to put that out there. But these things are really simple that we're going to talk about. I have four strategies I want to share with you. They're really easy to do. You can do most of them at home. They don't require a lot of time or effort or energy or even money. So I do think that they're worthwhile, even if you are checking your blood work with a, on a routine basis. So let's talk about those. So number one, the first thing you can do to check your thyroid at home is to simply look at your symptoms. And your symptoms are really important because they're an important diagnostic clue as to what is happening in your body, and specifically, what is happening with your thyroid gland. In a perfect world, if your thyroid is functioning at 100%, you should be asymptomatic, meaning you should not have any symptoms. If you have any sort of deficiency in your thyroid, even let's say the thyroid's functioning at 100%, which we're gonna consider normal for this, um, if, your th if your thyroid is functioning, let's say at 90%, you're gonna feel slightly sluggish. You're gonna have certain symptoms. Your hair might not be growing as fast. You might feel fatigued. You know, you, you know all the symptoms. You might be slightly, you, you know, your body temp might run a little cooler, things like that. Um, as that gets worse and worse, so let's say it goes from 90 to 70% or, or to 60%, all of those symptoms you experienced previously are going to be exaggerated and they're going to be worse. And so what you can do, this is very important because it allows you to track those symptoms and to give you an idea as to how your thyroid is progressing. If your symptoms are getting worse, then whatever you're doing is not working. Um, and on the flip side, if your symptoms are getting better, whatever you're doing is probably working. So how do you check your symptoms? It's pretty straightforward. I have a PDF. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, well, I'll, get, I'll put a link um, underneath the, the video description here that you can go to. And it, what it is is it allows you to download a list of symptoms and you can print it out and then you can kind of check off those symptoms that you have. And I also have a, some information on how to grade your symptoms, so in terms of severity. And what you do is you just, when you start out, you check off all the symptoms and see where you're at. You grade them in their severity. And then as you do therapies, you recheck them. And that kind of gives you an idea as to how you're progressing, either you're, whether or not you're doing good or bad. And sometimes this is important. It sounds obvious that you're like, well, of course, if I'm getting better, I'll notice it. Uh, and that isn't always the case, uh, in fact. I've treated a lot of patients, and sometimes they, they forget what they were like even three months ago. Um, and so it's, it's a good idea to keep this on hand, especially if you have a, you know, a printed document or something that you're keeping notes on. And then you can look back and see, well, six months ago I felt like this, and now I felt a lot better or a lot worse or something like that. So that's really helpful. Your symptoms are very important. Number two, your body temperature. So your uh, basal body temperature is it's part of, well, let me put it this way, your thyroid controls um, at least a large majority of um, your of your body temperature. And so what that means is, as your if your thyroid is functioning normal normally, your body temperature should be normal, the 98.6 degrees. Um, a, as you become hypothyroid, meaning your thyroid function decreases, your body temperature tends to drop. And as you become hyperthyroid, the exact opposite happens and your body temperature tends to increase. We're not going to talk about why that happens, but um, one thing I will note is that a lot of patients with hypothyroidism tend to have severe cold intolerance, meaning that when they go into a cold place, they are just not very tolerant to it. It bothers them a lot more than it, than it should. Um, and so you'll see these people with, they often wear, you know, socks when they go to bed at night, or they often wear two sweaters and, it's, you know, it's not it's 70 degrees outside or something like that. And so that is a definite sign of hypothyroidism. And what you can do is you can actually quantify your body temperature by simply taking your temperature every single morning. I explained a little more how to do that here. Um, but what you should see as you track your body temperature is that as you treat yourself or, you know, one way or the other, you should see your body temperature slowly start to track up. Now, it does take a while. This isn't something that just pops out of, you know, if you, let's say you start taking thyroid medication, it doesn't just automatically increase overnight. But over weeks to months, you should see your temperature rising slowly. There are a couple of variables um, that can interfere with your body temperature, including um, ovulation. So keep that in mind. And I do talk about this in the article here. Um, but you can and you should, I think, check your body temperature, especially if you're taking T3 thyroid medication, because that tends to impact your body temperature more than, let's say, T4 medications like Synthroid or Level Thyroxin. 
So it's a real easy way to look and see how well your thyroid is functioning and, and if what you're doing is working as well. Number three, your resting heart rate. So this kind of goes along um, with your body temperature. Your thyroid gland uh, helps produce a lot of the heat that your body has, which impacts your body temperature, but it also helps regulate cardiac output and cardiac function, which is code word for saying your heart. So how quickly your heart beats and how strong it beats, um, those are all impacted by uh, your thyroid, the amount of thyroid hormone in your body. And so you can imagine if your thyroid is not functioning very well, your heart rate tends to drop. And so what you might see happen, and this is what I see in a lot of patients, um, is they have resting heart rates in the 50s, but they may be, you know, they're not a conditioned athlete. So we're accustomed to thinking that your heart can be very strong and it can pump a lot of blood. But that tends to only be the case if you're somebody who runs, you know, marathons or, you know, is very well conditioned as an athlete. If you're not a conditioned athlete and you're overweight and you have hypothyroidism and your resting heart rate is in the 50s, that doesn't mean your heart is working well. In fact, that probably means that your thyroid is impacting your heart in a negative way. And so what you can do is you can just check your heart rate. Um, you can do the same thing as you do temperature, you check it first thing in the morning. So it's really easy to just wake up first thing and, and check your heart rate. You can do this just by feeling your pulse, or you can get more sophisticated technology. Um, there's a lot of watches and heart rate monitors and Fitbits and Apple Watch will do it, things like that. So there's lots of things that will do it for you. And you again, you can just keep an eye on that. I do have a video here which with instructions on how to check your radial pulse, which is just the pulse in your arm down by your wrist. And this is for completely free, just cheap, easy way to do it. All you have to do is um, be able to count and to find your pulse. Now, finding the pulse is not that hard, especially if you practice it a little bit. Um, but you can do this really easily. And all you do is you just do it first thing in the morning and then log it as you go and, and boom, you're done. And then, like I said before, as you treat your thyroid, you should see your pulse increasing. Now, the flip is the flip side is also true, if, especially if you're taking thyroid medication. Your your pulse might increase too much, and that might be an indication that if you, that you're taking too much thyroid medication. And if that happens, you might feel things like heart palpitations and so on. But this is a really easy way to test how effective your medication is, um, and if your medication is working, and or if you're taking too much medication. And I have a lot of my patients still do these things, even even though I'm treating them, and we're checking their blood work. I have them check their heart rate. And I have them check their basal body temperature. And then, of course, I will always monitor their symptoms. But I'm asking them about those things. And then, lastly, number four, uh, and again, there's more information on how you can do this in this article if you want. And we'll have the link there as well. So number four is actually examining your own thyroid gland. So if you go into a doctor's office, um, this is becoming less and less common, but it was definitely more common uh, let's say 20, 30 years ago when we didn't have as many tests available. But doctors should be feeling or what we call palpating your thyroid gland. And that's basically just physically touching your neck, touching the thyroid gland, and trying to feel and see if there's any abnormalities or irregularities in the gland itself. Now, it can be difficult to do that on your own. And so I have a little picture here, a diagram, which shows the anatomy of the gland where it sits. Um, here's another example of this. So it's kind of hard to reach around yourself and kind of feel it yourself. Um, but you can do that. In fact, uh, we obviously practice on ourselves in medical school, um, so you can do this, and we practice on others also, but um, you can figure out how to do this, and I have the instructions on how to do that. Um, but there's an, a little bit of an easier way, and this is a more of a visual way that I also have a video on um, down here that you can look at as well. And what this strategy does is it allows you to monitor your thyroid gland visually with your eyes, and it's really simple. So you just get a glass of water. Um, you don't take a sip yet. You have a mirror that you're looking at. So you're holding a glass of water by your mouth, and you have a mirror up around the area of your face. And you kind of lift your neck up. You take a, a drink of the water, and you watch in the mirror. You look right at the base of your throat. And as you swallow, what will happen is your thyroid gland will move up and down. The skin stays still. And so what happens is it kind of goes underneath the skin itself, and it kind of projects the image of the thyroid gland against the skin. So you can see it while you're looking at the skin. And this is important for looking at any irregularities, any cysts, any nodules. You can actually just look at this um, and test it. And it's something that doctors do a lot as well, and you could just do it right at home. So there's a video that explains exactly how to do this. The only problem with this test is not that it isn't accurate, because it is, um, but it doesn't necessarily tell you if your thyroid is functioning well or not. This is primarily better for assessing just the physical characteristics of the gland itself. So let's talk about a little bit about the other ways to test your thyroid. So of course I mentioned thyroid function testing, and this is just 
a fancy new way to describe your blood work. I have a list of what I, re what I refer to as the necessary and important thyroid lab tests, and then some optional thyroid lab tests here. If there's any question at all that you have a thyroid issue, then of course you should get your blood work tested. These tests that I mentioned above, they're not as accurate as these blood tests, but they are helpful to augment the results of these tests because there are a lot of conditions which cause these tests to be, let's say, um, inaccurate or not as straightforward as you might think. And so you really need to have secondary sources of information to help paint a more clear picture as to what is happening in your body. So I recommend doing sort of a, a whole um, conglomerate or several of these things together to get a better picture. You can read these. We've talked about these on my channel before. Um, so if you want to look at those, you can. But here are the necessary important ones, and then, of course, the optional thyroid lab tests. The last thing you can do to, to check um, your thyroid, but this you can't physically do, obviously, but, you, but it can be done by your doctor. Uh, let me just point this out. So if you want to get lab tests and an ultrasound, which is the next thing we're going to talk about, generally you need a prescription from a doctor to go and get those things done. But an ultrasound can also be used to look directly at the thyroid gland. Um, it, again, it doesn't give you information much like that swallowing technique I was talking about before. It only tells you what is the physical characteristics of the gland, but it doesn't say if the gland is functioning well or not, which is what most people who have symptoms are concerned about. So it is important. It can be especially helpful if you have Hashimoto's because Hashimoto's can cause inflammation or atrophy of the gland, depending on where you are at um, in the progression of your disease, and either um, an atrophic gland obviously doesn't produce enough thyroid, so you would have symptoms. And an enlarged gland can also produce too much or not enough as well. So it can be helpful in Hashimoto's, but it's not necessarily going to be helpful to understand the function of your gland if, let's say, you have a thyroid nodule. Because most nodules in cysts do not impact the function of your thyroid gland themselves. Um, another question I get asked a lot is, can you get your own labs? The answer is yes. There's lots of companies that will allow you to do it. Um, I have a lot of information. I won't go into that too much here, um, but to say a couple things here. And number one is you can definitely go order your own labs. One of the problems with this approach is that it does cost a lot of money. Um, if you have insurance and you just get a doctor's prescription for it, your insurance should cover it 100% as long as it's billed and coded correctly. And that's generally how I do it. But I understand that some doctors are not willing to order the right tests or for whatever reason, maybe you're in a smaller town or I don't know, there's lots of reasons that you might want to get your tests done. And you can order them, but just realize you're going to have to probably pay a lot more for them. I think I calculated using Sonora Quest as an, as an example, just to get your microsomal TPO antibodies, free T3, free T4, or free, this should be free T4, and TSH, it costs around $120. That doesn't include the draw fee, which I think is like another 30 or 40 bucks. So compared to being free, and you can get more tests done for free if you have insurance. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then the other thing is to remember is just because you get your results doesn't necessarily tell you or it doesn't allow you to get the treatment you need always. Because remember, the doctor typically has to prescribe the medication. If you're doing natural therapies, you can absolutely take advantage of those therapies um, and you can look and see. So there, there's still value in doing it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but you need to put all these things into context before you do it. So that's pretty much it. There are ways that you can check your thyroid at home doing self-tests. Um, and my, They should, in my opinion, be used in conjunction with thyroid function tests, which are your lab tests. Um, and they all sort of give you different bits of information. And I think it's best if you use them together. But if you were just going to do the self-test or if you're going to do the lab test, definitely start with the lab test first because I feel like that would give you more information. So if you have any questions about these or how to do them, please refer to the article. But if you have any further questions, Please leave your comments or emails or comments or questions below, and I'll do my best to answer all those questions. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.